um, to this important discussion and just invite our audience of youth health advocates to, if you have a question, you can raise your hand, you can unmute, you can talk, um, speak to our presenters. You've heard about talking about Bruno, you've heard about the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And so I'm going to open up the floor um, for any questions from the, from the audience. If not, I will use my moderator privilege, privileges and ask a few. I'm, I'm not seeing any hands as yet. Um, so I'll get, I'll get the ball rolling, but feel free. You can use the chat if you're I, okay. Yeah, oh, I, I, have, <clears throat> I have a one question. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to uh, say one thing uh, regarding the uh, marketing. So now, nowadays, what I can see is that uh, most of the uh, uh, small, small shops are others are they are selling the uh, like uh, uh, chips and uh, uh, dry foods. So which is just uh, nearby and very easily accessible. And uh, what I see is that most of the parents are also sending the, their kids to buy something for them only, so for their family members. So. So how can we uh, stop such kind of the things? Otherwise, the, and another thing is that uh, because of pandemic and loss of the online classes is going on, and then uh, uh, all the all the children and uh, small small children are become how the easily accessible of the mobile. So now it is what I see. Even though my my kid also playing the mobile games and in the whole times, but outdoor games are becoming very uh, very less. So how can we uh, control uh, and how can we advise and how can we create the awareness in, the, in our society? So can you, if you uh, can explain a little, little more so that we can get the more explanation, uh, we can more, uh, get the more knowledge on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, my Pat. Okay, so I think we can get perspectives, hopefully from Laura as a youth advocate and also from Nicole, from the perspective of the CRC on how, how those issues can be addressed. Uh, yeah, of course, I, I could be for the first, if you agree. Okay, well, uh, thank you for the for the question. It really uh, makes me think the same, the same of you. I, um, I have no kids for, for now, I have no children, but I could imagine how hard it is for the, for the parents to regulate, to control this access, this excessive access to the to the good and bad information and to the advertising uh, from their kids, from their children. And of course, we don't have a, a unique and a clear answer for now. For example, uh, from my perspective of the perspective of my presentation, we uh, advocate for the adoption of the additional protocol. And this additional protocol is just a, a legally binding document to, to force uh, the companies to be clear at least to be clear about what they are promoting and I think from my perspective that if the companies are clear and we as parents as a big brothers and sisters and um, we promote the critical reading of the nutritional information for our kids uh, if that both parts are, are are good if our kids are critical critical with the information, with the nutritional information, if we uh, teach them about how to read a um, um, nutritional table, for example, for a product, if that happens and for the, the companies are clear about what they are selling, the levels of sugar, the levels of bad fats and all, we could uh, maybe create uh, new generations with um, different point of view of the food they are uh, thinking about um, asking for, uh, to their parents or uh, the food that they are buying in the future. So yeah, it, it is not easy uh, as you say, with this pandemic situation, we are all the time in the, in the laptop or in the cell phone and we are getting like attack with this information. But I think that we as a, as a parents or as a big brothers and sisters, we should share with the, this concerning with our kids and we should teach them how to interpret this advertising. That will be my answer for now. Uh, Thanks, Laura. Hopefully it's a point to, to keep talking and keep debating about it. Thank you. 
Thanks, Laura. And okay, Nicole. So, so just let me follow on from, and I actually, it's, it's quite funny, Laura and I didn't talk beforehand, but we have a very similar response. I have two kids, so I can kind of add that, that sort of experience into the mix. So I think what's important to recognize is that this is a long-term battle. So it's nothing that's going to be resolved overnight because clearly we're trying to change a culture and culture is never changed overnight. But what we understand is that the Convention on the Rights of the Child gives us a very powerful tool in that battle because you have legally binding obligations that our states have signed on to, all of our states have signed on to and ratified uh, that then, in a sense, compel them to at least justify to you why they're not doing why, what they need to do. Uh, and so inaction is not an answer and a lack of a response is not an answer because they have these legally binding obligations. In addition, I think it is also important to recognize that uh, the, the government plays a really important role in terms of creating an environment that allows for better decisions to be made. And this is where the rights of the child convention and other similar conventions that speak to the human rights issues that are implicated by unhealthy diets uh, are really helpful because what it speaks to is to say, hey, you government, you have an obligation to work with parents because we have a role too and the kids themselves. But you have a obligation to create an environment where the healthy choice is the easy and the um, affordable choice. And that then leads nicely into Laura's point about where we are at today in this region in terms of our support for front of pat labeling. Front of pat labeling, we saw how that was a powerful tool in Chile's arsenal in their school environment. So in regulating their school environment and kids more broadly in terms of broad casting and all of those things within the broader society, their, their exposure and, and, and the power of the marketing to those kids. Front of pat labeling became key. Why? Because it's so difficult for us to know what was good for us or not. And that's why it relates back, as, as I was saying as well in my presentation, that when you think about the right to health, you can't think about it in isolation because it actually implicates other things like your right to know what's in your food, your right to have accurate information, your right for the companies not to be misleading you that you think something is healthy and it's not, or it has in food and it has absolutely no food in it and those types of things. So I think it is... As I said, a long-term battle, but that doesn't mean that we don't start now. We have to start, we have to start now exactly because it's a long-term battle. And we have to utilize the tools that we have, and we do have some powerful tools. And just the last comment, last two quick comments I wanted to make was, and of course, civil society plays a really important role in all of those spaces in terms of empowering and advocacy and all of those things. But I wanted to just mention about the optional protocol that allows was talking about. Um, so this is an optional protocol that they're, they're proposing in the context of something to speak to specifically on healthy foods and uh, beverages. But bear in mind as well, certainly in CARICOM, I, I think I am correct. Certainly Barbados hasn't and Jamaica hasn't, but I'm, I think I am correct that no CARICOM member state has signed on to the optional protocol that exists right now to the Convention on the Rights to the Child. And so that is definitely something that we need to be looking at and pursuing from an advocacy point of view. And time is up, so I'm done. Wow, wow, thank you. Thank you so much, Laura and Nicole, um, for your responses. Uh, such a, someone said, it's such a powerful discussion, um, just from that one question. And I know others may have so many other questions, but we do have to move on. What I wanna encourage persons to do is hit the chat button and type your questions into the chat. Hopefully our presenters can stay online and be responding to any further questions. But I just wanna close out that conversation um, to highlight that youth advocates, we are not left to figure out things on our own. As Nicole was just pointing out, there are resources available. Um, the Healthy Caribbean Coalition and World Obesity Federation developed one of those toolkits that, you know, that is available to us as youth advocates, how we can leverage the CRC and um, its current optional protocols and any future ones.